Uh, this is the first time when we will have a panel session uh, and uh, the aim is to facilitate open discussion among experts and guest speakers about the future, future changes of the energy market in the upcoming years. So our speakers will be Clara Poletti, Leonardo Mius, Peter Scher and Christoph Transcru. And the moderator of the policy session is Cosimo Campidoli. So Cosimo, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Kata. Good morning, everybody. Uh, the CSCM report uh, is, uh, in our view, an impressive piece of information for the quality and the quantity of information it delivers. Uh, we considered in the NIMO committee this uh, document not simply uh, a compliance paper, but uh, a tool to align all the stakeholders and the institutions around the evaluation of what has been achieved and what is still to be done in the in the next future both in terms of uh future compliance expected but also opportunities and challenges uh so this is exactly uh, a piece of paper to propose and support a discussion panel like the one today with our distinguished speakers i'm honored to to moderate the debate today uh we have this uh 40 minutes of time and i would like to go to two rounds of question and answer with the uh, uh, with our speakers and i will start uh, if you all agree uh, with uh, acer with christophe uh, because uh, well uh, as i said CSCM report is somewhat showing how we are complying with the uh, existing requirement and uh, which is the expectation for uh, what's still missing in terms of compliance so i would say acer is the natural candidate to to provide the the, the first answer uh, we show in the CSCM report the impressive growth of the, of the market cap in both in the and intraday in many terms by geographical extension, by level of requirements embedded, uh, so further uh, TSO requirements, uh, NEMO joined, uh, and, and so on. From the perspective of ACER, uh, which are uh, the most relevant uh, steps expected in the next five years to come? Thank you, Cosimo, and, uh, and good morning to, to, to everyone. Um, indeed, and this report is uh, uh, impressive. A, a lot of uh, achievement uh, have been uh, made over the last uh, years. And, and, and again, this is uh, really impressive. Um, maybe with a, a, a small, and, and here I, I should uh, uh, congratulate uh, all the NEMOs and TSOs for this uh, uh, fantastic work and all this uh, achievement. And I fully agree with the, the first statement of, uh, of Rafael that, uh, uh, that uh, in his, his introduction that the market coupling is, uh, is part of the solution uh, to the energy prices uh, uh, surges. And, and, and is also part of the solution for a cost-effective decarbonization. So all these achievements are really uh, important. Maybe a, a bit of, of a caveat in my, uh, in my uh, uh, positive words is that uh, yeah, we, we, we expected all these achievements to be, to, be, to be done a, a bit earlier, much earlier. Uh, uh, but again, uh, I think that you uh, I have a lot of sympathy for the Nemo's world, actually a lot of empathy for the Nemo's world because you, you live in a very uh, uh, difficult world, uh, a difficult governance framework, uh, and it's quite, uh, it's quite challenging. Maybe we will come back to, to this issue later on. In terms of uh, future expectation, um, I mean, all the, the intervenants uh, already mentioned uh, the, the, them, but for us, the, the most important uh, expectation uh, moving forward is to, to, to finalize this uh, geographical extension, both for day ahead and intraday. I think we are getting there. We have a couple of borders still to be coupled in the day ahead time frame, and maybe a few, a couple of, of uh, member states for the in, intraday time frame. So we really need to, to finalize this. And, and the, the, the second uh, priority is the, the capacity calculation methodology. The, the flow-based uh, project, uh, in particular uh, in, in the day-end market uh, for the core and, and Nordic uh, region, this is, a, this is a, a, an important uh, priority and uh, we are really uh, uh, looking forward to, to, to have these two projects uh, fully implemented. And then the next step will be to implement this flow-based in the intraday, another big, big challenge. 
and, and maybe the the, the other um, uh, important project is this uh, uh, 15 minute product it was mentioned i think by peter that uh, uh, this is an important uh, development uh, for the, the integration of, of uh, renewable and uh, yeah this is also something that we love to 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 deliver Okay. Maybe 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 what what one one other uh, important development is the the, the development of intraday uh, uh, auction uh, uh, that uh, yeah we will also uh, uh, facilitate the the integration of uh, renewable in the in the market. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you so much, Christophe. Indeed, it seems that Nemo's life won't become easier in terms of things to be done. So that's uh, the, the our task together with TSOs. Uh, I would then move to uh, to Peter to 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 get a, a TSO perspective. Uh, uh, in the in the last years, uh, one of the main changes, apart from the geographical extension in the market coupling world, has been the progressive inclusion of more and more. Uh, network topology elements and TSO requirements. We started originally through the, the, the zonal pricing mechanism, which is the basis of market capping, then including flow-based, uh, losses, ramping constraint, uh, because th this is needed to, to provide the secure management of the system and uh, pricing well reflecting uh, the constraints which are in the system and so providing good pricing signal. Uh, do you envision any further uh, evolution in, in this direction in the next years and on which ground, if ever? Yeah, I must say in general, we have still a lot to do and we have to go forward um, on the way of redispatch cooperation, who we work already well together um, yeah, for next year as in the ELTSO, we're gonna look deeper somehow what is being done um, in the regions and see where we can find some points to harmonize all over Europe to really um, work closer together. But in general, before we would mention and go for very big new ideas and points, I would just say the main focus for us uh, would still be concentrate on implementation. So Christoph, you mentioned already core Nordic flow-based market coupling. Then next year, um, we're going to start with Picasso and Mari, the balancing projects all over Europe which will be a, a huge gain as well in Europe. So I would say we do not have to invent the world new with completely new um, disruptive um, developments. Uh, we rather need all resources we have somehow um, to bring this further on the road where we are at the moment. And as well, um, to give one example, at the moment, we have quite very, very high prices. Um, I checked this morning the prices. I'm sorry, only for the CWE region, including um, Spain, uh, Portugal, and Austria. So there we had at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 10 o'clock the same prices. So even we are in a moment of very, very challenging framework, um, I see we are in a good track. Go forward and please give us, and it means NEMOs and TSOs, the time just to implement um, before we come up with completely new directions and projects. Okay, thank you so much, Peter. Uh, let's move to uh, to the point of view of uh, an array with, with Clara. Uh, until now, we 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 discuss uh, a lot of uh, technical implementation, uh, technical requirements, uh, regulatory compliance. This is a huge part of our daily business and this is expected and to be done. But uh, I would like to uh, request your point of view uh, with a, a more systemic view from the perspective of the EU global welfare, the well function of the markets. So not necessarily strictly related to the technical compliance, what is expected. And from your perspective, from the perspective of all and raise, uh, in the last years, which have been uh, the most fundamental changes uh, which has been implemented, what is still missing to, to, to reach the target of the fully integrated European market and well functioning? Thank you, Cosimo, and thank you for inviting me. Uh, let me just start by saying that the EU internal market is actually one of the largest experiments of electricity market creation in history. So it's very relevant and uh, congratulations. So I think we are doing a great job. If you look at the US, for example, 
there is not yet a single market for electricity. They, they have different seven different regional markets. Uh, and I think this should be duly taken into account when assessing the progress made by the EU member states in the last years. And uh, now that we are really uh, in at a difficult time with uh, incredibly high prices, and the system is there, is transparent, is working up and running, and this is very important. Of course, uh, there are improvements that are not only possible but are necessary if we look ahead. And now you mentioned the, the welfare, uh, the welfare perspective, uh, and uh, uh, I think if we look at what we need to implement, uh, I think the implementation of the intraday capacity uh, options that have already been mentioned by Christophe are going really to be a step forward, a, an important part of the target model. Uh, options will not only give a price to a scarce resource that is capacity, but will allow even uh, smaller players uh, to uh, be active in the market and will help pooling liquidity. So I think this is going to be a, a very important step forward. Another very important step forward um, is the, the ease uh, of the access to information at least cost. Transparency uh, is going to be more and more relevant because we are going to have smaller market players and uh, we have to uh, ensure a level playing field. And again, this is something that is already, you may say, in the regulation. So if we look outside the box, uh, I think we the, the debate on flexible price structure uh, is relevant and is important. Uh, so the, the possibility that uh, is under discussion of having uh, solutions such as side payments to ensure that bids that are accepted are in the money uh, I think uh, is, is something uh, that needs to be uh, discussed. We need to find our own way, which is not the, uh, the American one, to ensure that our markets are, uh, give the right uh, price signals. Uh, let me just uh, close by touching upon two points that I think are important that have already been mentioned. First of all, the risk of decoupling we have to define procedures that uh, are able to minimize the risk of decoupling uh, and this is this has a very uh, relevant impact on welfare again uh, and we have to improve the timeliness of the process is difficult uh, uh, we have to and you are working on very complex and uh, integrated uh, issues but uh, for sure, this is um, something that we have uh, to improve the integration of the countries in the MRC project or the 4MMC project has taken longer than planned. And, and again, this is something I think we should uh, address and improve. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Clara. You provided a very insightful approach to, to, to the matter. Um, it's now the turn to, to go to, to Leonardo and Foreign School of Regulation. You are uh, somewhat uh, in the table, the, the non-institutional party, so you have uh, completely hands-free to provide your view. Uh, Clara mentioned uh, very properly also the comparison with, with the US market. So there are uh, uh, there is no one size fits all in these kind of things. There are several kinds of approaches and experiments throughout the world. The European one is very specific. The US one is another one. Uh, I would like to have your view on the, uh, uh, the, the kind of experiment we are implementing in Europe. If it is sound, what is still missing? So which are the, the most relevant things uh, which have been uh, implemented and still missing uh, to have uh, a well-functioning market. Once more, with also with, with your view, uh, hands-free and looking uh, outside of our borders. Thank you, Cosimo. And 
Thanks for inviting me because it uh, forced me to re read your report <laughs> and I did and I have to admit it was not yet really on my radar because there is so many reports out there right you I have the annual report of Christophe and his colleagues to read the market monitoring report and so he's producing a lot of reports and now I discovered that the Nemo uh, committee together also has a report which is massive, by the way. Um, and I was very happy to listen to the presentations who clarified very well um, some elements of, of that report. So I'm also happy to, to see that the NEMO committee is actually more and more becoming a kind of NEMO com community, it seems. It's also really nice how to see how you come together in presenting all of that material. And if I just go back a, a bit in time, because I fully agree with uh, Clara that what we have really created something different, right, in Europe, which is amazing. I, I'm equally amazed of how we got where we are today. I still remember in 2002, at the beginning of my PhD, we still had to convince mm -hmm. many countries that you actually need a power exchange and a spot market. Then we needed to convince everyone that market coupling was maybe not a bad idea. Then we said, okay, but if we have market coupling, maybe we need a bit of governance. And I think Christophe was one of the people also asking me to work on that topic. And that was also very controversial. And I think for a long time, we, we were not sure if we were going to make it with the limited level of harmonization, right? Because look, I mean, I think it's still unbelievable that this whole, whole thing works, even though we allow some countries to have competing NEMOs, the others don't. Right, so we didn't harmonize that. We didn't really harmonize the products. We added flow-based, we added geographies, and it's still working. So I am really amazed. Um, and for me, it's also nice that your report goes in so much detail on the algorithm performance with all these KPIs, very transparent. We can discuss that now. I, will, I did not yet know you had that open call for ideas, which I think is also great. Um, you have uh, Euphemia Lab, which is really fantastic, and you allow researchers to contribute. So I would really encourage you to do more. Now, my questions for the future are triple, right? You showed that in your R&D, um, the, maybe the products are not necessarily the problem today. That's, you know, your first results suggest that, which is counterintuitive a bit for me at least. But you did already show that you cannot scale anymore with these 15 minutes, right? Then the whole thing explodes. So what will we do now? Open question. Will we be forced to harmonize more to handle that time unit or not? I do not know. Also on the governance, there is discussions going on. Will we have to consolidate this MCO function more? Yes or no? I like that there are alternative proposals saying we could maybe keep the institutional setting we have today, but we just change the governance process, the decision process between TSOs and NEMOs? I do not have the answer. Also, what I like a lot is that you're already thinking about um, a new type of setup with intraday auctions and day ahead auctions. What does that then mean, right? Would you just have a sequence of three, four auctions and would they become equally important? Re really interesting. I even men heard you mention co-optimization in the R&D which I also like um, as a researcher, will we do that, right? Will we co-optimize at some point? And how will that change day ahead? Um, and how will that integrate better between wholesale and balancing? That's also very exciting to me. Um, and maybe as a last point, I wanted to reconnect with uh, Raphael's opening comments, just like Christophe. I do think we have to do more effort to sell what we have. And we should be proud of, of what we have and we should not allow that now the public discourse is, you know, against wholesale, wholesale is not working. I very much agree with the fact that if we wouldn't have the whole setup with market coupling we ha would have today, things mm -hmm. would be much worse. And maybe we need to communicate that more. And that's why maybe your report could evolve from a more technical compliance report to also a bit more, you know, communicating to a wider audience um, on the benefits of market coupling and everything we've achieved so far, just to make sure that nobody, you know, gets the idea to destroy everything <laughs> we created. Um, because I think all of us understand good what we created and all of us have many ideas how to improve it further, but I would be really sad if we would go step back, no? Which we have seen can happen with Brexit, right? So them leaving the whole MCO, um, thing. So let's not take for granted uh, where we are. Um.
Okay, thank you so much also for the enthusiastic approach uh, to, to, to our activities and contribution. Uh, I fully share what, what, you, what you mentioned. Uh, here and there, uh, I think we can uh, move into the, the second round of questions and uh, to approach the, approach the second half of this round table. Uh, I heard mentioning here and there from Christophe, from Clara, from Leonardo, uh, the, the, the ongoing processes of revision of CSCM uh, in order to, uh, to set the scene for the future evolution of the system. Now, uh, th there is a point, at least this is a, uh, the, the, the new experience. Very often, uh, the debate is focused on the algorithm because it is uh, the things, the, the, the practical piece which is supporting and implementing the market coupling. It is where all the complexity uh, ends up and so has to be managed. And this is somewhat conceiving the idea that the, uh, uh, the EU single market is uh, simply uh, the outcome of a central process, a central market coupling process which is obviously part of the story. There is one central algorithm, one central process, uh, one central set of requirements, but indeed market coupling is also the outcome uh, of a long series of uh, local regulations, local requirements, uh, local implementing projects, because we implement things very often in ways. So countries uh, come in stepwise. Uh, the, 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 the latest examples is not only intraday or tomorrow the, the, the IDAS, but uh, the 15 minutes, uh, which has been approved with a chance for an erase to approve local derogations. So countries will implement it 15 minutes stepwise, which is introducing further complexity from the technical implementation perspective, from the uh, project management and so on. So this is uh, an unavoidable part of the process. As somewhat Leonardo said, we are Europe. Europe is done this way. Uh, we can like it or not, but this is done this way. Uh, so now, when we come uh, to the ongoing process of CSM review, and especially to the ASA role, which is uh, in this part of the process uh, uh, with the hands on the wheel, uh, which is your view uh, of the ASA's role uh, to manage this interaction between the central regulation, the central implementation, and the local regulation, the local implementation, with all the related complexities, conflicts, and challenges. Our question. Maybe I could start, uh, Cosimo? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's for you. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> So indeed, we need to fight the right balance, uh, and, and uh, we need uh, we need a, a governance framework which uh, which allows to make the, the the right balance, and we need something effective. And and maybe this is the the, uh, 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 the fundamental the core problem uh, with, with the, the the market coupling is this. Uh, um, uh, the, the, this uh, uh, request for the NEMOs to, to at the same time, to compete with each other and, and to coordinate with each other, in particular, to manage this, uh, this uh, central uh, function. I think th this, is, uh, this is something that, in my view, we need to address uh, because this is a fundamental flaw in the, in the, in the CSM uh, 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 regulation. And, and uh, I think this, this is by through this tool that we will be able to, to, to find the right balance. We, need, we, we, need, we really need to, to separate uh, what uh, falls under the, the, the what, 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 what should be a, a regulated, the regulated task, the, mono, the monopoly, uh, monopoly, monopoly task, sorry, from, from the, the competitive task. And, and uh, if we are able uh, in the in the in the next version of the CSM guideline uh, to clarify this once and for all, I think this will be a, a, a major improvement. We are not asking for a, a disruptive uh, changes. We, we we know that there are ongoing development that need to be implemented. We need to keep the focus on on, on this issue. But on the other hand, in particular, in the context where we are under, we are all under strong pressure because of this, uh, because of, of these energy prices, 
I don't think that we have time to lose. We cannot uh, rest on our laurels and, 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 and just wait uh, to implement all the, these future challenges. So uh, this governance uh, issue in, in, is, in, in our view, the, the, we need to, to address this issue and, and, uh, and, 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 and this, this is the, a prerequisite to find the right balance between the, the central function and, and the, and the, and the lo lo local ones. Okay. okay Thank you, may I... Yes, please, Clara. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Just to make it lively and interactive. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, this is a very tricky issue you brought to the table. Uh, it has many angles. It's not just governance, uh, it's um, enforcement, for example, together with governance. And it's, uh, the, it's related to the more general uh, regulatory framework, uh, for example, for uh, cost uh, recovery. They are all interlinked. The way you allow NEMOS, for example, to recover that cost is somehow uh, linked to the governance that is set up. And of course, enforcement uh, is another issue. But uh, on cost recovery, let me say uh, clearly that I think that uh, we should better harmonize our rules. We need a more uh, European approach because uh, um, uh, if we want NEMOS uh, anti SOs, uh, and, uh, and that's, that applies to all system operators to uh, implement uh, what they are expected to implement, uh, we need to have clear rules. Uh, and uh, uh, give a certainty on uh, how the risk is shared. So ex ante, a clear rules to me that I work in regulation, I've been working uh, since a long time, uh, is, is the way forward. Um, on, uh, on the governance uh, is a very uh, tricky uh, and difficult uh, issue, uh, of course, uh, uh, improving the current governance is widely acknowledged uh, as the one uh, of the main purposes for amending the CACM regulation. So uh, now I think it's clear that we don't need, we don't have to look only to algorithms and technical issues, but the governance uh, is a, a very important part of the process. Uh, uh, the role of NRA here is to provide technical expertise to the policymakers, but I, I think uh, neutrality and independence are two very relevant issues. And again, here we should uh, uh, work and analyze uh, the cost and benefits of each solution. They have pros and cons. So I don't have the answer. <laughs> I don't know if somebody else has the, the answer, but uh, uh, we need uh, to work uh, on it for sure. On enforcement, the uh, ESA regulation uh, uh, sets set out new rules for the compliance and the enforcement of the EU law with reference to EU entities and gives different roles to ESA and NRAs. Here, in my opinion, uh, uh, what we need to do uh, is to uh, improve, and this is what we are actually doing, improve the cooperation between ACER and NRAs on uh, the assessment of non-compliance. Why? With reference to enforcement, uh, that remains, as stated by the regulation, a competence of NRAs of the member state where the regulated entity is at its headquarters. Thank you so much, Clara. Peter, uh, I see you with uh, comments pending. At first, I think on one point, uh, Christoph, I, I fully agree with you and, and Clara on the governance point. Um, no, we got it, and we understand it, um, and we all took already the ball. There's the governance part, uh, we have to change something. I go as well, like Leonardo, you in a bit back, 10 years back, I remember those meetings somehow where half of the participants in a, in a meeting have seen uh, Europe completely as a threat because first it brings enormous costs when you have to change and adapt the system to a European system. I really can say and promise that how uh, the meetings changed during these times and we see how we can bring together further 
within the in the e-market committee we ran it like this when we agree on methodologies frameworks we have a debate um, on it and we try to take all this so it's important we have all in e members with uh, member state tso's and non-member state tso's and we try to come to consensus on a methodology and it's and let's say it about 70 percent cases we, we come to a consensus and then it goes quickly through about 30 percent we have a few that have really problems with the solutions and there we then go for a uh, for a QMB voting and i can really say <laughs> this is needed at a certain step really step forward and we have here good experiences and it's the only step uh, to really come forward and have these democratic processes um, within this framework and what, what i realize as well um, from the tso side yes it happens it's sometimes tso from some, some countries have a problem they do not support a vote but however what i really strongly realize that the conclusion that is being decided by all TSO meeting is being supported by all. At least I, please, um, Cosimo and Nemo colleagues, correct me. What I realize that even TSOs that are overvoted in a market committee meeting, that they do not block it in operational implementation. So the spirit completely changed here in the last years. And the benefit, even when you lose at one step, um, you gain it in another one. Um, this is quite clear and it is quite important to have these debates among us to really understand even if a third country, a non-EU member country TSO has a major problem with the issue, they have the chance to really bring in their issues to, to really that we that we with it. Um, otherwise, if they have a problem, it's a European problem. So um, we have to cooperate and I really um, like that you understand that this democratic process is needed and uh, we're in, in, in working together with the NEMOs there indeed we need as well this, this um, QMB voting process where we start on a contract basis working by next year and even try to earlier um, go for that indeed will not work all over Europe if one of one would block it um, something we didn't pre-discusses TSOs along the lengthly, but even I personally would very much appreciate um, if the NRAs could as well decide in QMV in the regional level. Um, normally when we as TSOs had QMV voting, one or two countries TSOs have been blocking. Um, if the same NRA blocks it, um, it takes a long time until in the end ASO takes a decision. And Yes, now we come to the point to have a short debate on this um, new entity, central entity to run the operations and stuff. And there, um, Christoph, you mentioned it's not um, a disruption. I would still strongly warn somehow to give um, points where we have now had the presentation in which details and effects on market participants and access around to give it in a single hand, not having this European debate for the best solution. It's a battle from time to time for a best solution, but this needed to really um, take all opinions on board. Thank you so much, and Peter. If, if I might just jump to an, a next step. Um, uh, you mentioned the word costs harmonization um yes indeed from time to time um this could be easier when costs are supported and agreed by some NRAs and, and not by others this might as well be a way to really go for for some more harmonization on a regulatory approval of of costs but please give the ball back thank you Thank you so much, Peter, for your comment. Uh, 
uh, let me allow a, a, a small comment from my side and then we, we move on also with, with Leonardo. Uh, I think that uh, it is publicly available, the position of NIMOS and TSOs with respect to these topics uh, following the, the, the consultation from ACER. We all support that there is a need for strengthening governance in two fundamental directions, uh, which are acknowledging what has been already happening now in many cases. First of all, uh, formal cooperation involvement of TSOs together with NIMOS in all the market coupling processes processes until now. Originally, that was not the case. Uh, now, TSOs are fully on board. They are on a contractual basis, but they will have to be uh, following formal regulation. This is strengthening the process, uh, avoiding complexity. So this is absolutely needed, and we are already implementing, as has been mentioned before, a joint governance, NIMS and TSOs going in this direction. Second point related to this is the QMV. Uh, any decision making requesting unanimity may come to a point, but it uh, could be a uh, hard time. So uh, on this, there is perfect uh, sharing of, of the vision between NIMES, DSOs, uh, ASO and NRAs, I think. Uh, what we're discussing is more on, on the rest of the topic. So which further changes to the governance could be needed? And here I would like to, to come to my question. Uh, which is somewhat a, a question, uh, maybe we, we can start from, from Leonardo, uh, if he has a point of view on this, but uh, it is open to everybody. Uh, uh, very often in the past, we had cases of uh, delays of uh, implementation projects. Uh, one source of that was surely the complexity. Uh, there were challenging projects uh, involving many levels uh, of details from the contractual to the technical, algorithmical, so uh, they, they, were, they were not naive. And very often they were in parallel with other projects. So complexity is part of the story, which cannot be avoided by any kind of regulatory reform. Uh, you can change the world by the regulation. Uh, you can only regulate the world as it is. Uh, the second part is that this is uh, the, the, the Lima perspective experience, I think also the TSO experience. Many of these challenges and delays in implementing the markets come from the local level in the debate uh, mco versus competition come from the competitive side meaning the the final stage uh, towards market participants so the local part of, of the so if there is a technical local implementation when we come to to demos when you have to implement into a process the final part of the local clearing the local trading platforms and so on so whatever we change on top this part of the bottom uh, it, it is the complex part because it's inherently local. If you ask parties to compete, they will compete with different solutions. You cannot harmonize uh, what is competitive, otherwise it is fully regulated. Uh, and uh, this is uh, addressing specificities. You have market participants of small dimension or big dimensions, different clearing party, clearing arrangements, and so on. So once we have this level of complexity, which is very often uh, further integrated by the local regulations, many of the complexities of the requirements we have are the need to implement regulatory requirement, which comes from the local ground. Uh, it can be for the, the, the Italian pool, it can be from the different MNAs, which has been locally approved by NRAs, it can be from the different flow based models throughout Europe. It is not one, there are many. Uh, uh, the, the 15 minutes in under derogation and so on. This is part of the story, which won't be changed by any revision of the way the MCO function is organized. Because MCO function is the supply, but the problem is the demand, the demand from local specificities throughout Europe. So maybe uh, for, for you, Leonardo, just to start the discussion, if you, what, what's your view uh, as for that? Uh, also maybe in comparison with the, 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 the UX experience, which is somewhat a, a completely different approach because they have several uh, solutions which are cut and paste. It is quite uh, incredible they are not able to merge being so harmonized uh, rather than Europe, which is completely integrated, but completely non-harmonized. Uh, but the question is also obviously, especially I would say for Clara, which is representing uh, all in a race. So uh, she represents the, the, this a uh, world where uh, the local challenges are there and won't be affected by a central tool to deliver uh, the central algorithm. Uh, Leonardo and then Clara and then uh, whoever wants to jump in the discussion is free. 
I should start with a small disclaimer that I think all of you are very close to that governance and I'm a bit of an outsider, right? So I don't think I can have a very strong view on it. It's more a high level view, I would say. Uh, I mean, I do not know if it's better to change to qualified majority or create an entity, you know, that level of detail. Um, but as a bit of an outsider, I think it's going to be inevitable to take additional steps in governance, whatever they are in detail, right? Because I think, as you said, Cosimo, currently what we have done is not really harmonize a lot. And I think you make a distinction between if we change the governance for the MCO, it won't solve the local issue. Well, um, depends, because if part of that government governance change for MCO, we also change the governance in the way methodologies under the CACM, are developed, maybe that will create a new dynamic, right? We've seen this in the past. Every time we create a new entity that initially has a certain number of tasks, that entity can get additional tasks, which can also unblock other things, right? That are currently blocked. So I don't see the change of governance for the MCO as such an isolated thing. It can lead, you know, it can create new opportunities that can unlock other files. Um, and then, indeed, if I compare that with the US, which is also always very dangerous, right? But mm -hmm. <laughs> they've always been somewhat more willing to subject the rulemaking to one entity type of thing. But indeed, then they have several entities doing that. And then the coordination between these entities, between these zones, let's say, was dramatic in many cases, right? They don't even... Um, talk about it a lot, how the flows are being organized between, I don't know, P PGM and Midwest ISO. They also try to do that. They also have interconnectors. Um, but yeah, the results are really limited there. While that's what we are good at, right? To interconnect these zones on a much uh, larger scale. And we do have institutions that help us do that. But I think these institutions will have to evolve uh, inevitably. Uh, how fast it will go is something else. But if you look at your R&D plan, we are heading into a crisis of the current model, right? The current model is not going to make it with the 15 minute time unit. So it seems to me that we will have to make some decisions that we were not yet willing to do so far, which is more harmonization seems to be inevitable. I do not know what other ideas you have to deal with that 15 minute time unit than to harmonize more locally also. But if you have other ideas, I'm very interested to know about them. <laughs> Just before leaving the word to Christophe, uh, a point for you, uh, uh, Martina, before present the point that uh, through some technical solution in the R&D, namely the distributed architecture and some more operational time, we could be managing uh, the 15 minutes. So the, the point is be more in the longer perspective. Until now, we always cope with new challenges uh, by new evolutions. Uh, that can last, but for sure, uh, we are not stopping uh, already as some uh, attendants today requested in the uh, in the chat because uh, there are always new requirements coming on board, new regulations, and we have to cope with. Uh, co optimization will be only one, and it is not uh, that is challenging. Christoph, so yeah, your uh, hand. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to react. Uh, I fully agree with Leo. That, that uh, in in our view, this um, uh, governance issue is inevitable. Uh, for me, uh, the question is not whether we will need a, a MCO entity uh, uh, going forward. It's rather when, and and on this, I think we we can discuss when would be the 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 the, the, the right time to to have this disruptive uh, change. But but for me, yeah, this is the 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 only question. Cosimo, you mentioned the complexity uh, of this. Of course, this is complex, but but this is not a reason why we should not try to clarify and make it a, a, a little less complex than it is today. And 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 we all know, and I hope we all agree that this decentralized market coupling approach that we have today, with the M Nemo to to Nemo model, is is very difficult to 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 to, to handle uh, with. And, and uh, again, we need uh, we need uh, uh, to sim simplify uh, a bit this uh, this ar architecture. We need a future-proof uh, market coupling or, or organization uh, to to deal with uh, with uh, with this all the, the challenges ahead of us. 
my, my colleague from Revit will uh, mention the, the importance, the, the difficulty for the for them to collect the, the data from Nemo's uh, for the intraday time frame. Maybe the MCO entity could uh, could simplify and could could uh, could improve the, this aspect. But again, there are so many. We we already mentioned uh, some some uh, important challenges uh, ahead of us. There are so many other uh, uh, in, in terms of. Uh, uh, the, the co-optimization, the the the, the 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 maybe the the the, the reconfiguration of bidding zones. Some countries, some member states might decide to to move to to another system. There are so many challenges ahead of us. Again, we need a future-proof market coupling uh, 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 setup. Otherwise, otherwise we we risk to yeah to to not to be able to to to, to meet all these uh, challenges ahead of of us. And I'm not sure. Uh, I want to take the risk uh, to, to, to delay, uh, to have a delays in, in this uh, implementation process. Thank you, Christophe. Clara, I think you can have a, a last word because we are approaching the end of our time. Very shortly. Um, first of all, uh, just want to recall that uh, we started in Europe with a decision rules that were all NRAs, all TSOs, what type of what type of governance is that? How can it work? I mean, we we have a lot to do to improve. And, and first of all, leaving the all whoever uh, model um, that certainly cannot uh, cannot work in Europe. So we have to to improve our governance. Uh, and uh, just I just want to highlight that the more we integrate, the more we have to standardize the products uh, the, uh, and, and, and the rules. And uh, the way we um, uh, sort of uh, design uh, our, our system and uh, standardization has a cost. And this is why sometimes at local level you have resistance. So the point is to find the right balance between uh, uh, standardization and uh, uh, local needs, um, because the world is more complex than, than we think. Um, and uh, I'm sure, for example, that uh, greater standardization of products, that has already been mentioned, will be necessary, is unavoidable. Uh, so there are many, uh, many, uh, uh, items that need more standardization, more uh, uh, European uh, approach and, and more integration. Uh, the governance, to do that, which one is the best governance? Of course, the governance uh, needs to be more integrated uh, and uh, has to move accordingly. Um, I see the need for that, but uh, just one last remark. I'm, I'm not talking for all NRAs, uh, but I'm uh, just representing my ideas uh, today uh, as Italian regulator, let's say. Okay, thank you all for this lively debate. Uh, it has been very interesting and I would say open and free. So maybe Kata, uh, the word is back to you. Uh, I think we are entering the, the, the last part of uh, today's workshop. <laughs>